Amara was a 29-year-old black waitress who had spent the last four years working at Sunny's Diner, nestled in the heart of Berkeley, San Francisco. Known for her radiant smile and the effortless warmth she brought to every interaction, Amara had become an integral part of the diner's charm. From early morning breakfast to late night coffee refills, she had built connections with countless regulars who came to Sunny's not just for its classic meals, but for the welcoming atmosphere Amara helped create. For her, the diner wasn't just a job. It was a sanctuary, a place where she felt valued and part of a community. She loved how the smell of freshly brewed coffee greeted her every shift, mingling with the sound of sizzling grills and the lively hum of conversations. But beneath her cheerful exterior, Amara carried the weight of a challenging life. She had grown up in a neighborhood where opportunities were scarce and dreams often felt out of reach. Losing her parents at a young age, Amara had learned to navigate life's hurdles with resilience, taking on multiple jobs to support herself. Sunny's was different though. It was more than a paycheck. It was a place where she could momentarily forget her struggles and focus on spreading kindness, one order at a time. Little did she know that one evening, her life was about to take an unexpected and life-altering turn. The shift began like any other. The diner buzzed with its usual energy, filled with regulars and newcomers alike. The clinking of utensils and the soft hum of the jukebox created a familiar backdrop as Amara moved gracefully between tables, balancing plates of Sonny's famous burgers and pie. The air was thick with laughter and lighthearted debates, especially from a group of retirees who gathered every Friday night to reminisce about the good old days. Amara, always attentive, knew their preferences by heart, extra ketchup for Mr. Jenkins, a side of ranch for Mrs. Anderson, and decaf coffee for Mr. Roy after 8 p.m. It was during this bustling dinner rush that the familiar jingle of the diner's entrance bell echoed through the room. Amara instinctively glanced toward the door, expecting to see one of the regulars or perhaps a family stopping by for a late dinner. Instead, her eyes landed on a figure she recognized instantly, but never imagined she'd see in person. Standing under the warm glow of the diner's neon sign was none other than Steph Curry, the legendary basketball player whose name was synonymous with excellence and inspiration. The room seemed to collectively hold its breath. Conversations faltered mid-sentence, and heads turned as patrons whispered in hushed tones. Is that really him? What's Steph Curry doing here? Even the cook, who rarely left his station, peeked out from the kitchen with wide eyes. Amara felt her pulse quicken. She had watched Steph's games religiously, marveling at his skill, humility, and the way he carried himself both on and off the court. And now here he was, standing just a few feet away, looking surprisingly ordinary in a casual hoodie and sneakers. Summoning every ounce of professionalism, Amara smoothed her apron and approached him with a welcoming smile, though her heart raced wildly. Good evening, she said, her voice steady despite the butterflies in her stomach. Welcome to Sonny's. What can I get for you tonight? Steph returned her smile, his demeanor as down to earth as she had always imagined. Just a coffee black and a slice of whatever pie you'd recommend, he said, his voice warm and friendly. Amara nodded, grateful for the simplicity of his order and quickly set to work preparing it. But even as she moved behind the counter, she couldn't shake the growing buzz in the diner. The patrons' whispers grew louder, a mix of excitement and disbelief. Some pulled out their phones discreetly, snapping pictures or texting friends about the unexpected celebrity sighting. But not everyone was starstruck. At a booth near the window sat Earl, a regular customer known for his gruff demeanor and his passionate loyalty to the Sacramento Kings one of the Warriors' fiercest rivals. Earl was the kind of man who thrived on debates, often loud and contentious, and it didn't take long for him to voice his thoughts. Steph Curry, huh? Earl muttered loudly enough for everyone to hear. Betty thinks he's too good for a place like this. Amara's hand froze momentarily as she placed the coffee and pie on a tray. She glanced towards Steph, who seemed unfazed by the comment, his focus on the menu he was perusing. Taking a deep breath, she carried his order to the table, determined to maintain the diner's usual hospitality. Here you go, she said, setting the items down gently. Enjoy. Steph thanked her with a gracious nod, but before he could even take a sip, Earl pushed back his chair with a dramatic scrape and approached the table. The room fell silent 
all eyes on the unfolding confrontation. You're Steph Curry, right? Earl said, his tone more accusatory than inquisitive. Steph looked up, his expression polite but wary. That's me, he replied evenly. Earl crossed his arms, his voice growing louder. You make millions playing a game, but what do you actually do for people who need it? Heard you're pretty stingy with all that cash. A collective gasp rippled through the room. Amara's chest tightened as she watched the exchange. She had seen Earl's confrontational side before, but this felt particularly mean-spirited. Steph, to his credit, remained composed. I try to give back where I can, he said calmly. I've supported education programs, built basketball courts, and funded charities to help kids and families in need. Sounds like a bunch of PR nonsense to me, Earl shot back. You big shots only care about your image. All that giving back, it's just for show. The tension in the diner was palpable. Some patrons shifted uncomfortably in their seats, while others whispered in agreement with Earl's cynical remarks. Amara, standing a few feet away, felt a surge of indignation rise within her. She couldn't let this go on. Taking a step forward, she addressed Earl directly. That's not true, Earl, she said, her voice steady but firm. Steph Curry has done more for people than most of us could dream of. He's given scholarships to students who couldn't afford college, donated to disaster relief efforts, and supported mental health programs. He doesn't have to do any of that, but he does because he cares. The room went silent again, all eyes now on Amara. Her heart pounded in her chest, but she refused to back down. We should be celebrating people who use their success to help others, not tearing them down. She added, her voice filled with conviction. Earl opened his mouth to respond, but the intensity of Amara's words seemed to catch him off guard. He muttered something under his breath and returned to his seat, leaving the room in an awkward, charged silence.